Okay, we are going to live. Namaskar. Good afternoon. Sahitya Academy or Namaskar. Foundation of Sark Writers and Literature ki taraf se sanjuk ayojit ya karyakram South Asian Online Literary Conference jo 6 tarikh se aaj 9 tarikh tak sampann ho raha hai ye iska second last session hai main aap logon ka hardik swagat aur abhinandan karta hu is karyakram mein hamare beech Nepal Bharat Sri Lanka aur Bangladesh ke kavi maujood hain upasthit hain कुछ एक दो कवि बाद में जुड़ेंगे भी सब लोग अभी नहीं जुड़ पाए हैं लेकिन हम लोग एक एक करके सभी को सुनेंगे तो मेरे हमारे साथ अजित कौर जी भी मौजूद हैं उनका भी स्वागत और अभिनंदन है और हमारे साथ जो इस कार्यक्रम को देखने वाले लोग हैं जो YouTube के माध्यम से इस कार्यक्रम को देख रहे हैं उन सब का भी अभिनंदन करता हूं स्वागत करता हूं और कार्यक्रम की मैं शुरुआत करता हूं इस कार्यक्रम की अध्यक्षता कर रही हैं प्रोफेसर सुकृता पॉल कुमार जी जो अभी जस्ट वो ज्वाइन कर रही हैं तो सुकृता जी आपका स्वागत है और आप अपना वीडियो स्टार्ट कीजिए और आपकी अध्यक्षता में यह कार्यक्रम हो रहा है मैं सही आप इस अवसर पर कुछ बोलना चाहेंगे शुरू में या कि अंत में बोलेंगे सुकृता जी हेलो आपको आवाज आ रही मेरी जी जी आप अभी बोलेंगी या कि अंत में अपनी कविता के साथ समापन करेंगी मैं अंत में कर दूंगी अंत में कर दूंगी सॉरी मेरा यहां पे नेट नहीं चल रहा था जी जी ठीक है कोई बात नहीं मैं ऊपर आके दूसरी जगह से आके कर रही हूं ठीक है हम लोगों ने कार्यक्रम शुरू कर दिया है ये ऑन लाइव चल रहा है जी जी माफ कीजिए हाँ ठीक है ठीक है तो सबसे पहले मैं मीनू 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 मीनोचा जी को आमंत्रित कर रहा हूँ कविता पढ़ने के लिए हमारे पास हर कवि के पास छह मिनट का समय है कविता पढ़ने के लिए तो मीनू मीनोचा जी प्लीज प्लीज अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ यस यस वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून माय डियर फेलो पार्टिसिपेंट्स and uh, coordinator from sahitya academy and our chairperson sukrita paul and of course our very dear ajit kaur whose indomitable spirit takes this literary meet always to wider horizons every year coming to myself i am a relatively new entrant in the literary world and that too thanks to ajit ma'am who saw my potential and trusted me enough to translate her books from uh, her stories from uh, hindi to english and through that i discovered a latent talent for writing and so i got into the world of creating uh, poetic compositions so it is all thanks to our beloved ajit ma'am that i now have the opportunity to present over here as well my heartfelt gratitude to you my most charismatic ajit ma'am thank you Okay, the themes that we had to work on were a little heavy for me, though I have tried to do justice to them, and hope you will find my two compositions uh, presenting here today worthwhile. So the first one is uh, inspired by our main theme of beyond the uh, borders, the way these borders draw indelible lines across hearts, and how we, the common people, become mere ciphers in the uh, powerful hands. and also it is the as the common man who has the power to rise again so i have titled it those lines so here yeah, i start it now those lines deeply etched lines demarcating lives on this side and thine hearts did beat to shattered tunes crying out loud to lost wounds o oh, tears profound flow thou unbound for no one cares your rising sound and trapped are they those powers to be in games of thrones stepping on you and me cries did rise o oh, save us to save but blood thirsty minds relished gory nights 
Games were high. Lives mattered not. What were a few juxtaposed to alluring horizons? Left were the rabble, yearning for lost souls, but never the twain to meet those memorable shows. Those lines were drawn on grieving hearts, sundering all ties to the roots of time. There is the ray, that ray of hope, lost in darkness, never to return. Can we delve not into the depths of life and salvage those pearls of tranquil times? Care you not to carry remnants of glory to that world other than thine? Yes, but please beware. The ashes remain in this rain, flowing with meandering, rusted lines. Only a call from high can dissolve hardened vibes, piercing frozen hearts, creating chinks of life. We have a task, you and I, to bequeath a resurrected world for generations ahead. Can we not heal, bandage and seal, a glorious life for our children again? Obliterate those lines forevermore. That is what we need to do. Thank you so much. The second two relates to boundaries, but this time internal ones that are self-created. Life needs to be lived with complete consciousness, but most of the time we are so lost in the, in the turmoils of this world that we are not even aware of living, of even being alive. We need to release those boundaries, those our limitations, and live a wholesome life. I call my poem the drama of life because this is a drama. Looking into my mind, I found hidden there lots of rubble and thrash accumulated by my unaware self. Anger at perceived injustices, a resentment for life, jealousy, the green-eyed monster gnawing at my insides. Avarice pervaded all, grasping at each straw. Arrogance stood tall, pinpointing minor flaws. And yet, everything was a creation of my unconscious mind. For identifying with the world around, it lost its divine connect, lost its touch of awareness, which elevates us so high. And so, oscillating in a state of duality, my mind sought grace to rouse its dormant self, releasing a dark space. Oh, why can't this mind realize the value of serenity, a thoughtless awareness to retrieve divinity? When all it needs is the effort of observes, observance, of each precious breath entangled in the moment, and so bring into existence the supreme present, an immortal witness of my reality. Distinct is the me, living world, from the real me, thriving in a realm of eternal sanctity. The day will come when I realize, oh, what a waste of life, embroiled in petty strifes. And then I will touch base, a clarity far sight. Unnecessary are they, these dramas of life. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Menu uh, Menocha ji. Now may I request uh, Sri Adityanath Das. Namaskar, I am Adityanath Das. Uh, my poems were written long time back and I'm a civil servant, just uh, superannuated. They were published recently. And uh, the book name of the book, which was published recently is known as is Dancing with the Dreams. And I said, journey from me to myself. So I'll just read two poems. One is this one, another I read which is about the strife and the things which we face today. So first I will read that my poem. There is a world outside me 
and there is a universe inside me. And there is a bridge that separates and travels to your world. Every sunset, I hold one arm and come home to my universe. Every night, I lie down in two arms and sleep with the dreams of your world and my universe. And only prayer I have on my lips, may I be the bridge and may you be the arms and between your arms, the twain shall meet. This was my poem, which is known as From Me to Myself. Now, another poem is a little bit, this was written when there was riots in our country, which are, I mean, which are there a long time back, Muradabad riots. So I wrote this poem after those riots. It is known as, it is called Apocalypse Too Soon. Why should I find fought with the, with the bright lights? It's my eyes which fail to see the truth. Moving shadows of distrust get enmeshed with the lurking figure of fear. Chill of blood simply evaporates in the heart of hatred. Then compassion is contemptible and kindness meaningless. Wish I, why should I find fault with my gods? It's my heart which has lost the divine touch. No one shall be forgiven. No one shall be exempted for the flow of blood will not remain confined to the city squires. It will come to my door, enter my home, and my feet, hands will be red. Then I will not be able to tell my own blood from my enemies. Why should I find fault with the with apocalypse? It's my ignorance which called it too soon. These are the two poems from my book. Thank you. Thank you, Sahit Academy, for giving. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Adit Vinath Das Ji. Now, may I request uh, Ms. Tiniaz Amit from Sri Lanka. Thank you. Um, so, hi, hello, everyone. Um, I hope I've been heard clearly. So, my name is uh, Tiniaz Amit. I'm from Sri Lanka. So I write poetry and prose both in English and in Sinhala, and I translate creative content also. For me, writing is a very personal journey, and most often it's influenced by my own life experiences, as well as the stories that I see around me. So for this particular one, I've selected two of my two poems, which one very much strongly sort of goes with the theme of Beyond Borders, where I try to kind of see how identity, so most of my writing is also about it, where you're in a country like Sri Lanka and uh, I'm, um, my religion is Islam, I'm a Muslim, but I'm a Sri Lankan Malay, I'm a woman, I'm a working woman, so there's a lot of identities that come around me. So it's like um, trying to look at several sides of one story. So the first poem that I'll be reading today, it's a bit long, but it's called Eve, Now I Know. Uh, so it's an attempt to see like the untold side of one of the most known stories in human civilization and how Eve is blatantly accused of the fall. Um, okay, Eve, Now I Know. Eve, Now I Know Why You Gave Into Temptation, Why You Welcome the Prospect of Freedom, knowing it would bring you doom. Now I know why you finally smiled as the fallen angel yet to fall led you to the forbidden tree. Eve, now I know that it was not sudden, it was not spontaneous. I know that you must have spent many nights thinking, pondering, arguing inside your head. You must have had long silences that no one noticed when your mind beat harder than your heart, trying to see through the mist. And when the angels sang their praises of you and of that first perfect creation of the creator, you must have stood silent, 
one step behind him, shadowed by the glowing light that encircled him, praised, adored, applauded. And during the long, lazy days amongst the skies and the stars, you must have wandered alone, seeking something meaningful than an eternal life of serving one man and one creator. You must have tried your best to stay away, to avoid those inviting glances, the secret gestures, the silent messages that only you could read into. On those lonely evenings, when he was being praised and blessed and admired, and you were left all by yourself, if I know you must have fought many a battle within you to stifle your feelings, to do the right thing. Eve, now I know how you must have felt when you bit into the forbidden fruit, your eyes smiling, hiding the river of tears you shed before. When you relished that decadent taste and let yourself drown in it, when you invited him to join you, your heart must have pained knowing what was to come. Remembering the struggle, the sacrifice, and yet you led on with smiling eyes and suggestive lips and a touch of promise. They call you the doom of man. They blame you for the fall from heaven. They name you as the one created from a rib. The reason for their existence evades them. They call it the first sin, the very act which now they go in search of which they hurt each other for, burn money for, fight for, even kill for. Yet they incinerate your daughters when they pursue the very same. If now I know it was not a mere act of giving in. It was not succumbing to temptation. It was not blindly following the fallen one. You rebelled for your freedom, for acceptance, for recognition. You retaliated against the oppression, the degradation, the enforcement. You revenged both the man and the angel who used you. Eve, I hope you now know that we, your daughters, don't blame you. We do not see you wrong, rather the wronged. Eve, we now know because we are you. Millions of years later, we remain to be you searching for that bite of freedom. Um, okay, uh, the second one is uh, titled Black in July. So July is a dark month in the political history of Sri Lanka when the popularly known Sinhala Tamil riots took place in 1983. So it's uh, mostly known as Black July. Uh, this poem uh, kind of blends these sentiments with a bit of a personal loss when I, I, when I wrote it last year. So incidentally, it was after I shared this that I understood the international sentiments of this as well, because this was just after the murder of George Floyd, George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement had rose again. So black in July. Turned black this July too just like the many other Julys that came before. I burned inside like the pyres of human flesh that were set aflame, as the victorious gyrated in a dizzying movement of limbs, wavering, igniting, fooling more the brazier, while the memories of you torched my heart and the red flames lapped up my tears. Their skin naturally black, Blackened some more. Dark black, deep black, tar black, scorched black, black as the burning flesh on a barbecue grill flamed for too long. I prodded and poked the ashes of my memories like I did the day after the black night. When the sun rose red, indifferent to the wails of the night before, believing that it had dispelled the blackness. The ashes, flakes, fragile fragments, just like my memory of you today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nas Pamit. 
Now may I request Sri Hem Raj Kafle from Nepal to recite his poems. Namaste, everybody. Uh, special namaste to Ajit, ma'am. This is the first time we could see each other. Although I wanted to participate last year also, it was somehow missed. So I'm from Nepal, teaching in Kathmandu University. I write poetry, songs, both in Nepali and English. So glad to be in this session. So I would like to start my poem straight away. Two short poems. The first one is uh, titled, Learning to Walk. Uh, this is one of the poems that I have been reciting very often in different forums. The first time, walking through a crowd, I trampled someone's toes and apologized. The second time, walking through a crowd, I hit someone's heel and apologized. The third time, walking through a crowd, I elbowed someone's armpit and apologized. But I learned to walk, to walk through a crowd of myriad emotions and disciplined my steps. I still walk through a crowd. I still walk through a crowd. Now someone tramples my toes, hits my heels, or elbows my armpit and walks away without apology. But I keep walking, as always, through the crowd, thinking there is always someone around who is learning to walk. That was, that was the first poem. Okay. Excuse me? Okay. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Please, please. All continue. right. I'll continue. My second poem is uh, titled Arya Ghat Spectacle. This is about uh, the place adjacent to the temple of Vaspatinath in Kathmandu, the crematory, the, the place of cremation, which we know as uh, Arya Ghat in Kathmandu. So the poem is titled Arya Ghat Spectacle. Golden head of the deity, magnificent carvings in old shrines, melodious hymns, harmonious rhythms, intermittent chants and nails. Tourists chancing to click the splendid heritage, lovebirds strolling to and from the woods above, people busy babbling, sobbing, wailing, and choking with grief and smoke, the splendid the commonplace, the old, the young, the rich, the poor, the living and the dead. Corpses brushing past bystanders, corpses washing up in the Bhagmati, corpses waiting for pyres, corpses singing in lousy fires, cremators poking at smoky hips, vagabonds warding off vagabonds, Drunkards cursing unknown molesters, monkeys groaning at trespassers, dogs sniffing leftovers, flies flying from dirty ground to dead faces, from dead faces to living faces, thick smoke from half baked cadavers, filthy holy water of the Bhagmati. And there you are, a speck in the spectacle lost in the chaos, yet relieved in epiphany, that all worries end here, singing with your caliber. Your darlings and kinfolks choke with smoke oozing from your pyre, devotees, crisps, tourists, lovebirds, vagabonds, drunkards, monkeys, dogs, and flies on their usual errands, cremators poking at your remains, the ras, the whales, the ritual attendance and nonchalant gossips. The spectacle is eternal. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sri Hemraj Kapleji. Now may I request Sri Mithilesh Srivastava from India.
मिथिलेश जी आप अनम्यूट कर लीजिए थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग मी दिस चांस टू रीड आई वुड स्टार्ट नाउ डियर चेयरपर्सन ऑफ दिस सेशन सुकृता पॉल कुमार एंड फेलो पॉइंट्स इट इज माई ग्रेट प्लेजर टू बी पार्ट ऑफ द साउथ एशियन ऑनलाइन literary conference being organized by the sahitya academy and the foundation of sark writers and literature that is foswal <clears throat> i express my deep solidarity with the writers assembled here from the south asian region and hope that our literary endeavor shall be helpful in resolving issues concerning all nationalities we hope for a restoration of peace non violence democracy secularism and freedom for women i thank sri chandrashekhar kambar president sahitya academy sri k srinivasan secretary sahitya academy and sahitya academy awardee padma shri ajit kaur president of foswal whom with due regard and respect and affection we call her mother our mother ma i am an indian poet writing in hindi one of the national languages of india i am telling you with great pleasure but that i was awarded the prestigious foundation of sark writers and literature award a few years back with this a brief introduction i shall read poems as much as time permits my first poem is leela a woman Lila knows her very own position on getting tired of washing other people's dirty vessels she takes light doses of intoxicating pan smiling she moves about with her light body jumps and floats about like a crilich bird she knows not a number beyond 20 she hides her hard earned money in a money box not knowing that a money box does not yield interest neither does she know why policemen keep patrolling in roads streets trodden by simple peace loving people but she says she is afraid of policemen she also does not know the reason for her fear yet she is afraid of them maybe because their eyes are not as clear as the mirror maybe because she can't clean their faces like that of the vessels maybe she can't sweep and scrub their faces lila is not afraid of floors lila is not afraid of sounds of vessels lila is not afraid of the spider waves lizards rats cats dogs lila is afraid of policemen and lila never lies my second poem is wall why does someone why does someone read the writings on my wall 
and tremble after reading them. This is my wall, my place of worship, bereft of an understanding of my musings, the reader of my musings being to worry. Read the writings on my wall with thoughtfulness, my friend. Besides pictures, prayers and sorrows, there are also slogans on the walls. Like the slogan, I read on a wall. People can live without love, but not without fear. This slogan has now become a verse in my poetry. People squander away their surplus income and only sympathize with the marginalized. Look at the wall as a wall. Fear not. You too stick any poster on this wall. You too hang any of your sorrow on this wall. Draw a picture of people burnt away in the month of May. Tell the children to splash colors on the wall. Say not a word to anyone. Just understand that this is the wall which when transformed into a house appears beautiful even when water flows from its broken ceiling. Can I read one more poem? Okay. Familiar sounds, sounds that are familiar frighten me. Sounds that are familiar frighten me. Lightning surrounded by clouds frighten me. Closing of a door on second floor shakes my apartment on the first. Sound of the ball of a playing child almost frightens the lower floor. Sound of running footsteps inside, insights fear every night of doors being knocked at. Sound from second to the first floor seems coming from a distance. There is a mother growing old. There is a mother growing old somewhere in the distance. An unemployed brother who reaches home late sometimes does not return at all, slips into bed when returns. Avoid dreaming and babbling in sleep. There is a sound of beach as well. Namaskar. Thank you. Pranam. Thank you very much, Mithles Srivastavji. Now may I request uh, Miss Molly Joseph to recite her poems. Thank you. I think I'm audible enough. Am I? Yeah, yeah, please. Yes. Greetings from Kerala, India. Dear esteemed soul force behind this meet, Ajit Korma, and Force World and Sahitya Academy, and respected chairperson, and honorable poets who have gathered. I am Dr. Molly Joseph, a professor poet, retired. And thank you, Maji, for uh, 
giving me an opportunity to be a part of this great platform. I remember our last meet at Delhi where we were basking in the togetherness of Afghan poets and see how times have changed. And uh, yes, life pulsates on the uncertain, unpredictable. I have done my doctoral work in post-war American poetry, which reaches up to the contemporary. And the fragmentation around was actually baffling me. And I felt there should be a change in the very poetic diction. I evolved my own indigenous poetic diction called a ribbon poetry, something like short, simple lines, suggesting something profound. And in literary circles, it has gathered influence in the sense through the minimalities suggesting the maximum. So without wasting much of time, I'm just going into my poems. As it was given in the direction, we are supposed to give our notions of a poet, who is a poet in contemporary times. Yes, my concept of a poet. Life touches. You script it out, immersing slowly, subtly, becoming everyone, everything. That's my concept of a poet. Yes, dears, we live on slippery, slippery grounds. There comes my second short poem. Life slips away behind the polished paneling, silently, slowly, white ants eat away the wood. Life slips away. What can linger after you are gone? A thought, a thing, or an idea of a thing? Who cares? Live while you live. Make a wee big difference. Isn't there a middle world between all fears and hates? How we allow fear to feed hate. Can't we foster a level ground where humans turn humane? Haves, have nots, hold hands, hug each. Yes, the teeming counters, though disparate, hold promise. The black clouds holding promise. Yes, friends, I had been into publishing 14 books of mine, among them 12 are there. I wind up with hope. The last part, a very short poem. It's not an outcry in despair, but we poets are supposed to bring in alibis and panacea, I believe. Better late than never. Isn't it late for a debate? Healthy, wholesome, holistic. For us, the Anthropocene to survive? Yes, better late than never. Mother Earth on death bed. Her swan song resonates. We, the homo sapiens, the culprits, short visioned, greedy, drying up oceans, blocking rivers, building hydel projects, destroying balance of biodiversity. Now planning to set up satellites in space with huge mirrors to reflect and refract sunlight in desired directions destroying the organic rhythm of nature. Where are we heading to? Encroaching habitats of non-human species who have equal rights on Earth. How we cause transmission of toxic zoonotic virus, which turns mutant, causing epidemics. Where are we heading to? Who is to be blamed? Semitic religions. That bread, the arrogant hegemony of man as a master of the universe, or the rash use of science for self appeasing growth, for nations to run roughshod over each other. High time to stop 
our blame game to sit around the table of debate, healthy, wholesome, holistic. Thank you, Hoswald Literary Academy, Ajit Kauman, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Molly Joseph Ji. Now may I request uh, Sri Somasri Ekanyake from Sri Lanka to recite his poems. Hi, everyone. Namaste. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, for Madam Ajit Cohen Organization Committee for uh, giving this golden opportunity for us. Uh, telling something about me, uh, myself, uh, I'm Somsri Ekanayaka from Sri Lanka. Uh, and I started my literary uh, career by providing uh, poems and short stories uh, to the weekend newspaper and magazines. Then uh, I published my first novel uh, in 2005 and uh, first short story collection in 2007. Uh, however, after uh, 10 years uh, later, uh, I published uh, my uh, first poem collection in 2017 uh, and then second poem collection in 2019. Uh, th these days I am preparing uh, to publish my another new uh, poem collection. So that's uh, about me. Uh, today I'm going to uh, present two poems. Uh, actually, uh, usually I'm writing by uh, my native, native language, but uh, these two poems were translated to the English by my one of friend, Nisansala Dharamsena Bartholomew. She is also a very brilliant uh, poetry and uh, literature uh, reviewer in Sri Lanka. So now, uh, if you give me permit, I'm going to present my uh, two poems. Uh, my first poem is uh, based on the uh, broken relationship due to the war. The title, uh, We Are Just Remain of an uninvited bow. If you have time to spare, we can have a cup of tea, sitting side by side, reminiscing over the memories of the past. Why worry over the place to meet when the space between leaves turn into a universal itself? When broken memories are heaped like mountains, rusted and fields and traps. Let the past rest and as it is, and let us meet as it by chance, collecting the flowers of love burn in our hearts. Let us share our thoughts like the first day that we met. I will ask of you, if you still love me, will you ask, will you be asking, do you understand? Even though spring has left you and me, flowers still bloom out of season, out of place. Let us find the remains of an emotions in the depths of our hearts where life is and let us meet as once again. That is my first one. I'm going to uh, my second poem. Uh, that is uh, actually uh, based on the life and uh, some philosophical background. The title is Enjoy Life from Season to Season. It's scared by the cool wintry days not being able to run away, reverse froze and turn to snow. Yet someday, some rivers will melt away, turning into rivers of water. Flowers bloom and trees dance in love, spreading tenderness. Tiny locusts wow melodies, yet someday, spring to will bid its goodbye. Some same trees will silver over the winds of autumn, shading 
lives in fear and in pain, letting go of life of a generation, yet someday giving birth to a new life, a new generation. When summer comes, you are away. Burning is sweat, green grass weathering and drying away, wildfires spreading over dry leaves. Yet someday, cloud melting together will bring in rain. Ending of starting is an ending itself. Ending is a starting. Starting is an ending. Fall in love with this tender life. Where ending and beginning are blurred and mixed away. Laugh, weep, farewell said, let go. Yet meet again and again someday. That is my second poem. Actually, those two poems were translated my friend, as I said, Nisansala Bartholomew Dharma Sena. That is a uh, brilliant uh, one of uh, poetry in Sri Lanka. And thank you very much again, uh, Madam Ajira and Organization Committee. And uh, I uh, would say that is very great pleasure, pleasure for me to participate this very, very valuable event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Som Sriji. Now may I request uh, Sri K. V. Dominic from India to recite his poems. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me first of all express my deep gratitude to Madam Ajit Kaur for inviting me again and again uh, to this uh, magnificent, prestigious uh, Sark uh, Literature Festival. I am Dr. Kevin Dominic, retired associate professor of English, Newman College, Thodubura, Kerala, India. I have published uh, 41 books, uh, including 12 books of poetry collections. Besides, I am the editor of two international refereed biannual research journals and the secretary of Guild of Indian English Writers, Editors, and Critics. With this, I come to my poems. I am going to read only very short three poems. The first poem is entitled, Crow the Black Beauty. Crow, the commonest bird in the world, cleaner of kitchen garbage, has seldom been sung in praise by the poets. The poets hail cuckoo, skylark, nightingale. Parasite cuckoo lays her eggs in compassionate cow crow's nest. Unfortunate crow feeds cuckoo's chicks. Yet, Crow is not loaded and cuckoo is extolled. Crow's counterpart, dove, icon of love and innocence. Why is white attractive and black disgusting? When will crow crow be pleasing as cuckoo? When will the black be kindred to the white? When will the black and the white dwell in the same house and dine from the same plate? When will we behold God's creation with impartial eyes and find his beauty in all forms? Coming to my second poem entitled I am a red rose bloomed for all. The theme is ecofeminism. I am a red rose bloomed for all. Bloomed after thorny mounts. My sparkling hue 
and enticing fragrance allure innumerable romeos dancing round and round humming sweet love tunes tickle me with the fond kisses i am alarmed of villains iagos and dushasans who will rape me and cut my body to pieces some chop me by neck and offer to the creator or deck their dear's coffin my charm is lost when old then none will come near me neither romeos nor dushasans discarded by all i will return to earth where i was born i have least grief in departure since i served my mission well coming to my last poem shadows it's about shadows of our lives in my morning i was thrilled to follow my shadow allured by butterflies teats of birds and beauties of nature at my noon i could conquer my shadow stamping on it facing extreme heat in my evening i fear i will be chased by my shadow and push me to pitch darkness thank you thank you very much for listening to me thank you very much dr k v dominic now may i request uh, ma'am chobi arambam ma'am chobi to recite her poem she is from india from manipur ma'am chobi ji ah okay yes i hope you listen me yeah yeah please ah ha ha thanks sai the academy and poswal for inviting me for this reading and uh, i greet all my uh, fellow boys and uh, those who are watching uh, on this uh, online poetry reading first uh, i will read one of my poems in my language manipuri and then will follow uh, follow some of my translated poems the title of my poem in my language is kurak marup singi marak ta lo leba nong mai maru yekna ba singi marak ta lo leba gula lei re roi dra phong amatang samjin na na ba kurak na pai ri thot la ba sarum khap la khap la asa asa pa lei rang lei rang gi lei ka lei ka lei jara sanu hajang ase marup singi marak ta satkrasanu aigi sairen kurak ta kurak oi gulab singi lai ka lai ka da sambal pumba lan lan oiru rasanu mong pham makhoi gi thamoi lang lam dam da and my second poem is the green tender leaf once my history begins anew your all historical monument begins to crumble forever this terrible night of today i know i do understand is the parting night for you and me these long years we two have been locked in a dark but today we stand together at the final leg of the journey your last kiss and your last embrace oh so bitter but this pain shall take your place forever in my heart when the night ends and the morning breaks at the past ray of the ever new sun i still see around myself the crumbling of your all history and out of the rubble shall sprout a single shoot a tender green leaf 
my next poem is glass of wine. Life is an overflowing glass of wine. You trust the more you drink. So let us drink to all full. For my dear friend, the last mouthful that wish will fulfill this life to trust no more. Dowsing these plants inside that celebration delivering mouthful. Life is an overflowing wine container. You trust the more you drink, so pray. Let us drink to our full. My next poem is The Untamed Dragon. I had a passion to write on the webs to plunder the mysterious ocean, the vast boundless mire lying tempted before me. The rays of mountains on the horizon as blue as the far pent star cradled me into a stream to run free. But I was locked in the locks of Lord Shiva. On his, on his head top, lost himself in meditation. I struggled with the spirited locks, the might of the untamed dragon. Parvati shogging her old self, changed into Uma, merged into Shiva, escaped into Ganga, cutting her way to down towards the ocean for another challenge. Pieces of diamonds in abundance spread on a calm morning. Soft waves build grand frill, slipping under the golden dancing ripples. Unloose your thousand tongues, oh my great work, then quiz me, bury me in your womb among the grand quiz. Stop for a moment, the beating, the beating of the dance of death. Listen, listen to my white cry, the song, the song of my life. My last poem, The Frog. A frog hopping and hopping, gaining and gaining, one step to another, carrying its very small legs, the wrinkled and heavy body, with its spirited soul, hopping and hopping to escape to life, to life eternal. And a snack, a black snack, just after solving of its all and that skin, its ever youthful body and mind, radius for its ezel movements for lifting behind the floor. His red parting to one tongue, dancing in its red open mouth, his piercing eyes smiles intoxicantly, and his whole heart and soul dancing in a mysterious rhythm. The pop hopping and hopping as fast as it could, goes slower and slower from the last jump. It hops and hops calmly and gracefully on its usual pace. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Shaviji. Now mm -hmm. may I request uh, Sri Dhiraj Rai from Nepal to recite his poems. Mm -hmm. Greetings yeah. from Nepal to respected chair and all the uh, fellow participants and RTS. Gratitude to Ajit for Madam. This is my very much interesting and uh, important experience from SAC Literature Festival 2015 Agra to South Asian Literature Festival Delhi and now. Uh, online literary conference. Now, I'm going to recite my poem about my mother. This is translated from uh, Nepali to English by poet and translator, Suman Pukhal. I would like to dedicate this poem to let Taran Muriyat. About my mother. You got me trapped. How can I define my mother? If I was asked about myself, I would tell easily that the impudent character of the news 
you read every morning is me. The giant metaphor that resides in your poetry and keeps gossiping against you is me. And the crime hero being processed through the factory of politics is me. The illegal business, the illegal businesses of which you never know, the endless lies that you be believe without a trace of doubt, the eyes of greed wider than the sky, the height of arrogance taller than the Mount Everest, those stubborn minds that are only on ever about liability and the humanity that keeps laughing sitting on the cops of feelings all are me you should have that. as you asked me i can tell you only a sentence that i was the gentlest person in my life till i was with my mother and i'm going to decide my Next poem, Love Mark. Love Mark. Every time when I take a sip of tea from the cup you gifted before leaving, I feel the taste of your leaves. Entering into my heart, the sense and carries the entire day of mine. The, how can I deny the whole pieces of reminiscence? The footmarks left on the face of women remain more precious than the path walking. Thank you. And thank you. Site Academy and Fosra. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dheeraj Rai. Now may I request uh, Professor Sukrita Paul Kumar to say a few words from chair and also I recite her poems. Thank you very much, both Sahitya Academy and uh, Ajit Kaurji Foswal. I'm sorry to have got delayed in joining uh, for a few minutes because my net was not working downstairs. I had to rush upstairs to get to my computer that really works. So we are very dependent on technology, but thank God for technology that we are able to connect with each other and thank you, Ajitji, for making this possible because I think this is where we need to become a, not just society uh, of one country, but uh, connect up globally in the context of fighting, uh, you know, pandemic, fighting all the various, um, you know, uh, onslaughts that are happening on um, us as people, as human species, caused by many of them, caused by our own selves. So I think it's the poets who have to really connect up more and more so that some sensitivity comes within us. And as we could make out even in this session, for instance, you know, whether it is the identity context, which, um, you know, a Sri Lankan poet might bring up, whether it is a gender context, whether it is um, environment context, everywhere we have to come together. And even this issue of black and white that was, I think, raised by Dominique and um, in his poetry. And there was ecofeminism and there was um, so many issues that came up only in this one, one hour long session. And I do believe that, you know, we need to connect up on these uh, various matters in order to not just sensitize ourselves, but also become activists in life, in living of life in the context of saving our planet and our humanity. We have to also save our humanity, which we lose track of very easily. And poetry helps us in order to do that. So I think it's a very great idea to have uh, poetry going on, even in these bad times. And when it comes to, I'm not going to give a um, um, you know, a, a long speech or anything, but I just did want to talk about sensitivities and uh, how we need to actually come together, uh, have a meeting point of also differences. There has to be a meeting point of differences. If we learn to respect each other's difference, only then will we respect diversity. 
And I think diversity is absolutely important for us to survive, not only in this part of the planet, but everywhere in the world. We need to respect each other and our sensitivities. I uh, uh, have been in the earlier part of the pandemic times, I was actually doing a lot of writing as dialogues with Ganga. And this is because I was uh, living by the side of Ganga for about a month. And some emotions and thoughts that were churned out in me because Ganga is not a very simple river for us. It, it is a river of mythology. It is a river of philosophy. It is a river of, uh, you know, uh, folk tales, folk songs, so much of culture, so many things. So I was writing a whole lot of series of dialogues with Ganga when the pandemic uh, onslaught happened. And so uh, when that happened, I wrote the following few dialogues, I call them poetic dialogues. So I'm not going to read all of them. I'll just read two, three, or maybe four of small, of small dialogues just to give you a taste of what I was trying to do in as far as dialogues with Ganga are concerned. This is called Ganga Dialogues. Number one, the world is coming to an end, O oh Ganga, not with an atom or nuclear bomb, nor with an earthquake or floods, not with a sudden jolt, but as a gradual spread first of fear, then of asphyxiation, the war with the deadly virus has begun. Say, do you have a solution, O Ganga? Give us signs for the survival of the species, or do you too wish for our extinction, just to be able to breathe the fresh? Yes, we get it, the flow of life, like yours, must continue and not choke. The other one that I wrote, which also I will read, is um, still a smaller one. Stillness of trees becomes more still. With your gasping waves, O oh Ganga, running in exasperation, to reach some destination again and yet again, perhaps till the end of the world. With the inner eye you lent me, O Ganga, I saw Jesus with a stethoscope carrying the sick and the old across your turbulent chest, your waters stilled. Ghosts arose from your depths to dance on your glassy surface, O Ganga, leaving no footprints for others to follow. Say, my dear Ganga, will he reach your shore across and leave us behind? And I'll just read one little more. I have about 50 of them, but I'll read one small one as the last one. My soul lies deep in your waters, O Ganga. My soul lies deep in your waters, O Ganga. My body must dive into the river from Himalayan heights, if only to embrace her. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Ajitji Science Academy, everyone. Thank you, all my fellow poets. Thank you very much, uh, Sushita Paul Kumarji. And thank, thank to all the participants of this session who made this program successful. I request all the audiences for their comments. They may share the link of program within their circle through WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter. Can we watch our last session, which will be commenced at 4.10 p.m. And I also request to view our other programs, which, which are 
uploaded on the YouTube channel of Sahitya Academy. Thanks again. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.